I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wine snobs. Welcome to another edition of Wine Snob Calendar. Today is Malbec Day. Yes. And we have a special guest today. This is Shelly. Shelly, how are you? I'm good. Happy now, to be here. I know. <laughs> Happy to have you here. Um, you haven't met Shelly yet? Well, there's a lot of background. We're not going to go into it, all of it tonight. But Shelly is one of the big reasons I have serious wine issues. She played no small part <laughs> in it. This is true. <laughs> I remember uh, the one time we we're having, you know, hanging out, having wine in the back, and and uh, Shelly came and saw um, the shed I had in the back, which was supposed to be my home office. Mm -hmm. I was working a lot from home at the time as a consultant, and uh, but I never got around to finishing it. And she walks in and she's like, "What's this?" I know what this needs to be, a wine room. Yep. <laughs> I don't know why I never connected the dots. <laughs> Shelly's always, she's been known over the years to plant these seeds uh -huh. and then just walk away. And then years later, I'm like, <laughs> how did I get here? <laughs> Shelly's like the big sister I never had. <laughs> So anyway, so Malbec Day mm -hmm. is the 17th, I believe that's Saturday this year, and uh, so we're celebrating Malbec Day mm -hmm. today, and we're going to explore some Malbecs. Awesome. Shelly also has a keen palate, um, and she's, she can be quite the snob. <laughs> Just a little bit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty unforgiving, if you think I am, <laughs> you need to go wine tasting with her. <laughs> um, so. For today, I picked up um, two Malbecs. Okay. We're gonna try, we're gonna take a look at them and you know, just to give like a really broad spectrum. Uh, the first one is uh, V Cave. It's from um, Marema Toscana and it's from Italy. And this one is a 2009. Okay. Ooh. So yeah. Ooh. So yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And this is the other end of the spectrum. This one is from uh, Fair Play up here, the foothills. Mm -hmm. This is from Windwalker, and it's a 2014 from Fair Play. So we're going all the way, you know, to the other end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. This is a young winemaker. He just uh, recently took over winemaking at uh, Windwalker uh, about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And I actually just met with him last week and uh, went barrel tasting in the cellar. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has a lot of great creative ideas and and uh, you know an interesting fresh perspective on their wines and uh, some of the stuff I was tasting all the barrels were really good so uh, I thought this would be a good opportunity to dive in okay. and uh, we'll take a look when we were barrel tasting he had uh, he had something like four different Malbecs mm -hmm. and it was interesting they were all completely different you know really? some had cocoa mm -hmm. some had eucalyptus mint Ooh. some had um, you know caramel and like uh, just different expressions mm -hmm. all 2020 and it was really interesting looking at his process so I'm definitely looking forward to following him mm -hmm. as his style matures and um, We'll be doing an off the beaten path episode as well. I so, love those episodes. Yeah. yeah, those are fun. I'm looking forward to that one. He's actually yeah. excited about it too. I met the owner too, mm -hmm. who was you know this awesome dude. Yeah. You know, Jim, I believe, with uh, had lots of spunk and mm. lots of good energy. Um, so yeah, um, we'll take a look at this too. Okay. So we have a more, you know, probably more traditional Mediterranean Italian mm -hmm. Malbec, and we'll have one here from California, in the foothills. Sounds good. Yeah. So, um, I know you enjoy wine, of course. Mm -hmm. We've been wine tasting mm -hmm. many times. Um, where does Malbec fall in your, in your preference? Probably like right in the middle. So I prefer Zen's my go-to, right? You know I'm a Zen yeah, girl. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> because I, I always enter the Zen yeah. into, you know, we're doing a blind wine tasting, so the Zen's are my favorite. Um, I used to like Merlot, and then um, my palate completely changed, and then I was like, whoa, whoa what am I doing here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that 
crazy how your palate evolves yeah. over time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I remember I used to like, you know, Merlot too, mm -hmm. quite a bit. And now it's really hard for me to pick a Merlot, yeah. you know, that really, I guess you, you kind of exhaust the complexity in a certain variety, especially mm -hmm. those mass, you know, entry. Yeah. I consider Merlot an entry, a gateway variety. Yes. You know, once you once you get past the rosés mm -hmm. and you kind of evolve and mm -hmm. the light reds, mm -hmm. and then you you dive into Merlot first, head first, yep. and then after that you quickly exhaust the dimension. They're mm -hmm. not that complex, and uh, that, there's that fruity characteristics, very simple characteristics. Mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah, and uh, but yeah, same here. Um, I'd say Malbec too is right down the middle mm -hmm. for me. Uh, some of my first Malbecs I had were, you know, from Argentina. Mm -hmm. I guess everyone, that's pretty much the hot thing, you mm -hmm. know, as far as Malbecs. Um, I couldn't get my hands on any today, um, but I'm guessing they're very close to New World out here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it'll be interesting. This opportunity popped up on wine.com with this, you know, old Malbec. So I was like, let's take a look. Wow. I didn't even know Malbec from Italy was a thing. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> well, it's funny because the first, my first experience with the Malbec was about five, six years ago. And it was an Argentinian Malbec that I got from a grocery store across the street in San Jose when I was away at training for two weeks. And I'm like, okay, I need a, you know, I'm going to need a bottle of wine after yes. class all day, right? <laughs> So I go over and it's on sale, so I'm like, why not? So I try it and I'm like, oh my goodness, it was really, really yeah. good. Yeah. You know, they're really doing something over there. You know, I have to really dive into Argentina and find out what is it, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm guessing the that varietal just thrives so well there. Mm -hmm. And they really called it, I guess, you know, because after years, you know, it's, it's really taken over the world. Mm -hmm. When someone says Malbec, you know, I think Argentina, Mendoza. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, a little snippet about Malbec, you know, I, I like to just do a quick Google. Yeah. Um, but it says uh, Malbec's purple grape variety used in making red wine. The grapes tend to have an inky dark color, robust tannins, and are known as one of the six grapes allowed in the blend of red Bordeaux wine. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, you never think of, when I think Bordeaux, I don't instinctively think Malbec. No. But, you know, I know there's those varietals there that, you know, um, are not really as mainstream as Merlot mm -hmm. and Cab mm -hmm. and Syrah. Mm -hmm. um, and notable regions are Argentina, of mm -hmm. course, Chile, California, um, Cahors, Southwest France, Mendoza. Um, origin is France and sweetness of the resulting wine is typically dry, mm -hmm. but they do have that fruit essence. Mm -hmm. um, I like it when a wine is dry, but still maintains the essence of the fruit. I agree. Yeah. So you don't get that sugar. Right. Mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Colors red. So I think we're gonna, we're gonna be getting some wine grill tonight. Good. <laughs> um, and it's also ca called, um, Auxerrois or something? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, Cote and Pesac. So anyway, comment below on any more trivia about Malbec. Yeah. Would love to know. Add those, we'll add those to the blog as well. And uh, also don't forget to mention your favorite Malbecs as well and any Malbecs that you'd like us to take a look at the coming year and between now and next Malbec day. <laughs> Fun. So shall we dive in? Yes. <laughs> Let's. Which, which did we start with? Um, we should probably start with the 2014, right? Uh, well, yeah. We can decant both of them? Yes, let's yes. do that. Because <laughs> you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe they had your training and didn't have, you know, wine. Uh, I know, right? Yeah. Like... With everything you have to put up with. Ex exactly. <laughs> Shelly's uh, <laughs> getting ready to retire, actually, believe I it or not. Am. She may not look it, but she is. She's, she's definitely earned her keep and her stripes. <laughs> this is true. How many years? 32. Wow, that's crazy. Yes. And it's not 32 of sitting in some cubicle somewhere. No. <laughs> it's 32 <laughs> of coordinating the cleanup of everyone's mess in Sacramento. This is true. <laughs> 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 and that's, I mean, is, that's pretty awesome. You started, uh, this is at uh, Dispatch, right? right? Mm -hmm. So you started pretty much on the floor. I did. I worked my way all the way up. I started as a line level 
dispatcher. That's I awesome. sure did. Mm -hmm. And you're retiring as a manager because there was nowhere there was nowhere else to go. Right. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. How you have maintained your sanity is beyond me. Wine. Oh, why are you maintaining your sanity? <laughs> why? <laughs> what kind of question is that? <laughs> I can only imagine the stuff that comes through on a nightly basis. Oh my oh, goodness, God. no, you cannot. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, I, actually I can. <laughs> the shenanigans yeah. is just, it's, it's, it's pretty out there. You're the city's babysitter. <laughs> yes, it's true. A work-life balance is super important, but yeah, wine does help. <laughs> a couple of times I've been over, a couple of times I've been over at your place and, and I'll see you come home from a late shift mm -hmm. and I can just tell Shelly, Shelly comes in and it's, you don't really hear a peep. She just comes in, goes, makes herself a vodka cranberry, mm -hmm. takes a couple sips, and then joins the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty accurate. <laughs> We're gonna air it out here in my funny little decanters. I love the little beakers. <laughs> All right, so this is going to be the Italian Malbec, okay. and this is going to be the Californian. The inky grape, it is very dark. Yeah. Okay. And Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. And so you wanted to start with? The 14. The 14. Yes. All right. So this is the 14. It smells good. Uh, He's really doing some, some interesting stuff. Um, I'm looking forward to really doing more content with him. Mm -hmm. mm, intense plum nose. Mm, it is. There's a little bit of a mm. vanilla, caramel. Vanilla, yes. It's just very mm. ever present. Uh, what other grape does that? Um, there's a couple that just present that intense, thick plum. Syrah, Petite Syrah. Petite Syrah. That's um, now that's yeah. that's one of my faves. Uh, even Cab Sauve does that, but a little less uh, tart plum with a little more berry in mm -hmm. it, so it's a little softer. Mm -hmm. mm. That smells yeah. so good. I'm picking up that anise that you get up in the foothills there. Yeah. It's very faint. It's kind of in the back. Yeah. I love that. I love that. For me, for me, I, I that's one one of the one of the guides, you know, that a winemaker is on the right track mm -hmm. when that terroir is preserved and mm -hmm. anise comes through. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. I'm not smelling the 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 caramel, but it's, it's, everything it's else you're oh yeah. Mm. Dive in. Mm -hmm. mm, I can taste the caramel. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's good. Yeah, I think that's really good for a fourteen for a young. Yeah. Mmm. I'm looking. I'm. I'm looking forward to seeing following um, this winemaker's work. I think he's, uh, he's, he's just, you know, comparatively speaking, really young. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so I think there's, there's gonna be a, some interesting vintages coming out of him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, cause this is really good. He's got a little pepper there on the back. Mm -hmm. Warms the chest. Mm -hmm. mm. That is very good. Very surprising. Uh, okay, so let's see. We'll order it this way. And so the next one will be the 09. So this one has had time to relax. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Leather. Oh. A little bit of funk there. Yeah. Like a leather, wet wood. Yeah. Yeah. 
I like the the funk. Yeah, I like yeah. it too. Something because this is this is total. I mean, just berries, right? Just yep. right off. The, this is like, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people, some people like they, some people don't like that. You know, mm. every once in a while, I run into someone who's like, I, oh, I don't like that barnyard, or I don't like that old. I'm like, no, I like yeah, the yeah. I wanna, I wanna pick up the dirt in it. You know? <laughs> Ooh. Smooth. Very smooth. I mean, super smooth. Yeah, yeah. And you know what's interesting? I expected it to be a lot more uh, tart and dry. Mm -hmm. It is dry, but the that the fruit, that, that Malbec fruit is just present still. Wow, that is, that is really smooth. And there is the fruit there. It's not as much like in your face fruit that this one Rest, is. Yes. This was just more, it's just smooth and more subtle, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, so this is really good. You know, I expected um, a lot, a very wide difference, broad difference between both of them. Mm -hmm. But actually, they are more similar than not, is what I'm finding mm -hmm. in their expression. Yeah. This one has a little, still has that heat on the back. Yeah. It just doesn't have that youthful exuberance. Yes. You know, of the 14. Mm -hmm. But from to come from opposite sides mm -hmm. of the world, mm -hmm. and you know, for all intents and purposes, like different, probably different winemaking cultures, mm -hmm. like styles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, that is very interesting. Wow. For this one to be so young, and so this one is like, you know young and like in your face and this one's like i'm a little older and a little laid back yeah <laughs> <laughs> right different like yeah <laughs> i think it'll be interesting to see how this opens up mm -hmm. over the course of the evening mm -hmm. and see if it mellows out a little bit you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. um, gets close to this but even the colors a little kind of brown mm -hmm. you know, a little well yeah, I guess it probably was, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, but that is smooth. That is super wow. smooth. That is so good. Yeah. Yeah, it's also a lower alcohol. That's 13, and this one is 14.8. Wow. So, yeah, that's a big boy. Yeah, that is. But the expression from both is just actually share quite a quite a lot in common i don't get the anise in here no so that's definitely a terroir thing mm -hmm. from from the region up here mm -hmm. um, but then also in the uh, 14 you don't pick out the uh that funk that leather right, right. you know that, mm -hmm. that earth that damp wood. Yeah. you don't pick that up so it's interesting so that's where the region influenced it but it looks like the varietal is holding steady mm -hmm. across. Yeah, both I, of them. yeah, for sure. Very interesting. Very. You know, I didn't expect Malbec to uh, <laughs> to be this interesting. <laughs> <laughs> be like, yeah, yeah, I was like, it's oh, good. it's Malbec. It's yeah. Malbec Day. I made a promise to you know do a video for you know each Malbec Day, but I mean each wine day. Yeah. But I didn't think Malbec would. Uh, would reveal so much subtlety. Um, I thought it was one of it'd just be kind of a glorified Bordeaux blender, mm -hmm. you know, like a like Cab Franc or something. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, um, this is a uh, this is impressive. Yeah, it is. Wow. Surprisingly so. Yeah, I think I'll be looking at Malbec differently. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna have to celebrate this retirement that's coming. Oh, out. for sure. Thinking about a party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about, um, are you, are you going to consider uh, part-time, uh, making part-time part appearances on Wine Snob? Absolutely. As long as I'm invited, I will always make a part-time appearance. Oh, yeah. you, only, <laughs> you only lit the fire or threw gasoline on the, <laughs> the fire called Wine Snob. Absolutely. I'd be honored to make any kind of guest appearance. Mm -hmm, for sure. I'd like to capture her in Wine Snob covertly so you can see her in action it's not pretty <laughs> maybe maybe coordinate with the, the poor or the host to like pour her something terrible 
voice <laughs> intentionally. <laughs> yes, my face does not have an indoor voice when it comes to something I don't like. <laughs> Shelly can dispense with the pleasantries. She deals with enough in her day. Yes. <laughs> she doesn't have time to sugarcoat anything. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Life is too short to drink bad wine. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen to that. Well, um, I think, uh, you know, that's... Uh, there you have it, Wine Snubs, Malbec Day. Yeah. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, be sure to comment below on your favorite Malbecs, anything you'd like us to take a look. And we can make a Malbec Day any day. We don't have to wait another year. So. That's true. <laughs> and we shouldn't. Yes. <laughs> um, we'll put links below on where you can find these Malbecs and you can explore the difference in regions, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Um, you know, do fun little exercises like this. Mm -hmm. and you can see what the difference is and what the similarities are as well that the varietal brings and the expression. Um, but yeah, um, until then, wine snobs, happy Malbec Day. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>